Surely from now we need to ask ourselves, if I want to succeed in life and every one of us would love to see success, I need to realize success in this lifetime is closely connected to the success of the hereafter. Subhanallah. Success and true success in this world is closely connected to your success in the hereafter. When you are bothered about what's going to happen to you after you're going to die, you will be able to prepare correctly and live a life of contentment. Unfortunately, many of us, may Allah forgive us and guide us, starting with myself, I mean. Many of us consider materialism a source of success. When I can afford this car, this house, this watch, this phone, these accessories, this perfume, these holidays, these clothes, then I've succeeded. That is temporary, my brothers and sisters. When your salary is a million dollars, it does not mean you have succeeded holistically. Rather, that success is very, very limited. It is only a portion, perhaps 5% of what we as believers would consider success. And for that reason, Allah's plan is always that those who have the world with them and the materialistic world with them are not necessarily the happiest. In fact, they are not from amongst the happy ones. Because happiness and contentment is achieved primarily by understanding Allah's plan. By understanding you have to worship Allah alone. You have to build a relationship with the one whom you're going to go back to one day helplessly. Helplessly. I'm going to go back to Allah the day. The day that your wealth and your children will not help except for the one who has Qalbun Salim, a pure, a clean, a healthy heart that is free of sickness and ailment and disease. And what is that ailment? If anyone has worshipped or associated partners besides Allah, with Allah, they have faltered. So my brothers and sisters, we have a beautiful month of Ramadan. Let us seek the forgiveness of Allah now. That's how we prepare for Ramadan. And in Ramadan, we will repeat it. And we will continue repeating it. When a Friday comes, we repeat it. When the time of Tahajjud comes, we repeat it. That's what I want to say today. That your preparation for Ramadan is a commitment from now to say, I've started it. This is why the Prophet ﷺ in the month of Sha'ban, he used to fast a lot, a lot more than other months. It was the run-up to Ramadan. The softening, mashallah, we enter the masjid on a Friday, we notice a lot of the brothers reading the Quran. Walillahi alhamd, may Allah accept it from us. Your duty unto that word. And I started off mentioning a hadith that the best of speech is the speech of Allah. The best of words are the words of Allah. Connect yourself to the words of Allah. If you have a very successful businessman, a really successful person on earth, and there are so many names that spring to my mind right now about people who have achieved the millions and the billions and they have a story. They've written about their lives. Many of us would know parts of that story. What about Allah? When Allah has told you that I have sent to you the most powerful message and that is my word. Many of us have not bothered to try to look into the meanings of the word of Allah. And for that reason, we sway from the left to the right, from the right to the left. And we are not connected to Allah the way we should be. I promise you, if you were to make an effort with the word of Allah, Allah will come closer to you more than you can imagine. The closer you get to the word of Allah, the more the doors of contentment and happiness will open for you. And that is a promise. If you have problems on earth, if you have difficulties with your health, with your wealth, with your social life, with your financial, economic life, pick up the Quran and start becoming close to the word of Allah. When you show dedication, you will notice the calmness in your heart 
in your mind, in your system, and you will become happy with what Allah has apportioned for you. I remember a brother who complained regarding his business having been burnt down, and I told him, get closer to Allah. Three years later, he came back and told me that was the biggest blessing of Allah. I did not understand it at the point, but today I have a business 10 times bigger than what I had three years ago. Allahu Akbar. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, when you surrender to the plan of Allah and you understand that whatever Allah does, even if we perceive it to be negative, it's not negative, it's actually an opportunity and it's a positive and it will bring you closer to Allah. That's the reason why we have difficulty and hardship because if we did not, we would not have been close to Allah. Many of us, we are far from Allah when we are in days of ease. Nothing wrong. The minute something happens and there is a problem, we say, oh Allah, for the first time in your life, you are saying, oh Allah, where was that all the time? Allah says, we loved you enough to give you a problem, to be able to make you realize and understand you have a creator. So you raised your hands. So you said, oh Allah, so you came close to us, even if you lost your entire life. The fact that you came close to us, it was actually a bargain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah guide us.